didst one day complain to the Blessed Mary Alacoque when she showing to her thy heart crowned with thorns. Behold this heart of mine, so full of love for men, that it has shed its last drop of blood for them, and has given them my own flesh and blood as food and drink for their souls. And consider how this heart receives from most from most from most men in return for so great a love, nothing but ingratitude and contempt. But what grieves me most is that I am thus treated even by good and just souls. Do you not understand, dear Christian, the just complaint of your divine Savior? Is your heart not touched by it? Behold, says he, behold this heart which loves men so excessively, this heart which is always pouring out graces upon them, this heart so full of pity to receive sinners, to help the poor and indignant, indigent, to cure the sick, to console the afflicted, to hear the prayers of all men at what time soever they come to ask. His heart, which is almost beside itself with love, this heart is not known, it is despised, and what, it, what is the most piercing grief, even by those souls into which I have so often entered in Holy Communion? Ah, dear Christian, have you a heart? Well, if it be not of stone or iron, let it be touched by this touching complaint of the heart of Jesus Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. Give to your God and Savior what is due to him. Repay him for the benefit of your creation. Repay him for the benefit of your redemption, for the benefit of the preservation of your life, for the pains of his scourging, for the agony of his crucifixion, but above all, repay him, yes, in some measure, repay him for the excessive love and affection which he bears you in the Blessed Sacrament. But how, you will ask, how shall I pay my Jesus for love, for his love to me? What can I give him in return? Nothing but love. Love demands love and is contented only with love. But it must be true love, that is, such love as animates you to keep his commandments and to avoid sin, such love as impels you to receive him often in Holy Communion and still oftener to visit him in the church. Ask of him, then, so to detach your heart from all creatures, that you may live only for him who came down from heaven to live and die for you. So doing, you may expect with all confidence that in your last hour, your dear and amiable Savior, whom having not seen you have loved, will come to meet you, calling you to him by these sweet and consoling words. Come, thou good and faithful servant, come, because thou hast been faithful. In little things, I will place thee over many. Come and see what thine eye has never seen. Come and hear what thine ear has never heard. Come and enjoy what on earth thy heart has never conceived. Come, enter into thy joy of thy Lord forever and ever. <laughs>